is part two of the acid base chem lab titration. Uh, in this race, we are now ready to add the acid. And so I'm recommending for a good first titration that you add somewhere between, you know, five to 10 milliliters um, of your acid that you're going to titrate with your base. Because remember, not only do you want to do this quickly, but you also want to get the best results. So five to 10 milliliters is going to be what you're going after. So we have already recorded the beginning volume of this acid. I'm going to show you now that I'm going to put this flask underneath and I'm going to let this fly down to whatever I want. You know, somewhere between 5 and 10, I'm going to stop it and then record the volume. So here we go. I'm going to open up the stopcock. I'm letting it fly. I knew I was somewhere around 1. I decided to stop it around 6. I'm going to take a reading now. And my reading tells me that I'm at 5.95. 5.95 as my final volume. So that means that I am using 5.10 milliliters of the acid in this titration. The next step, and don't forget this because students tend to forget this, one of the things I like to do is go ahead and squirt the bottom tip of that burette to make sure that I got all that acid in that we were supposed to. So I just squirted the end of it. And then the students go, oh, whoa, wait a minute, you're not keeping track of the water. Well, if you remember, I don't have to keep track of the water because the moles of hydronium are equal to the moles of hydroxide in this pure distilled deionized water. I'm just now going to add enough water, and I do try to keep that level the same, to about 50 milliliters. The reason why we do this is we want to get a nice end point, a nice faint pink end point. Now, depending on how many drops you decide to use, I recommend one to two drops depending on the strength of the indicator. I'm going to use one drop in here, and it should be colorless. Remember, phenolphthalein in acid and in water is colorless. I'm going to swirl that, make sure that everything is really mixed before I get ready to do the base titration. Now, remember we recorded the base from the part one of the video. We had 0 0.60 milliliters of the base to start with. Now, on this one, I'm going to go a little slower. I'm going to turn it this way because I'm right-handed, and I want to manipulate the stopcock so that I can... Uh, control the amount of base added. Now, for the very first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do 180 degrees. And the reason why I'm going to do that is I want to make sure that I'm not already at that end point because I'm just using such a small amount of the acid. So here we go. And notice that you see already a little faint pink from where it dropped. So I am going to slowly open up the stopcock where we're getting a dripping action. And when you have a partner, this is when you should have your partner, one of you controlling the stopcock, and the other person should be controlling uh, the swirling. So I'm doing it in a drip-wise manner, and I'm going to put this white card underneath this because I don't want to overshoot, and it even looks like on the first titration I may have overshot it. Now the rule is you need to, and it doesn't matter that I've added water at that end, remember that doesn't affect your results, but I'm going to swirl this to make sure that I got everything I could. Now I'm really having a good day with burettes. Did you notice that this burette is leaking? So, if that were happening, you would go back to the coordinator and you would get another burette. And the reason why I know that is after I put water on it once, there's another drip coming off. So, what we're going to have to do, um, I will use another burette to finish this off in a moment, but I just wanted you to see this. And then we're going to do the first calculation with this. So, we're going to go ahead and proceed with this, and then when we go to part three, we'll have another burette. And we are going to do more calculations based off of um, the uh, base that we were using. So here we go. I'm going to take a reading now 
of this base. And the reading is 2.25. 2.25. So we did not use very much of the base. And that's what you have to be careful of. See, when you use very little of the acid, they can give you a base that's more concentrated than the acid. If you don't put enough acid in, then you could be, you know, backpedaling. So we have 2.25 minus 0 0.60. So that will give me 1.65 milliliters of the base that we used. Now the molarity of the acid should be given to you in the event. And according to this bottle, I had 0 0.10 molar HCl. So now you can see I only have one variable missing. I'm going to put in the molarity of the acid, which is 0 0.10 molar. I'm going to put in the volume of the acid that I used, which is 5.10 milliliters. The molarity of the base is what we are solving for. That will be our X variable. And the volume of the base that we used was 1.65 milliliters. Now, algebraically, you're going to multiply 0.1 molar times 5.10 milliliters divided by 1.65 to get your final answer. And I have a calculator here, so we're going to quickly do that. And now the answer is 0 0.31 molar is the molarity of my base, we think. We're going to go to part three, speed this up, have a better burette, and see how we go on that.